I want to come to you this morning and begin a series of sermons on the subject of prayer. I believe that that prayer is a quintessential part to any ministry in the body of Christ. Uh, last night we had Bishop Davis from Texas preach and he talked about all the churches in our community that we see. Big churches, little churches, and churches on every corner, but those churches are without power. Uh, those churches that you go into are, are not like the Holy Ghost filled churches that we used to when we were younger. And, and as he was beginning to explain and exit Jesus out of the subject, I began to ask myself, well, why don't these churches have any power? And it came to me that, that God had placed on my mind and placed on my heart a while ago that the subject this month for the month of May will be the subject on prayer. I, I do it all every year that, that I take a month out of the year and, and I preach about this specific subject. And it was kind of funny that, that the Bishop Davis had an opportunity to introduce the subject to the rest of the folks who was there. Because a church that has no prayer has no power. Uh-huh. Man. Man. We need to understand that, that before we do anything in the church that, that we must come together and fast and pray. Uh, I believe that, that a praying church must also be a fasting church. Uh, I don't believe that we can pray on this side and then not get over here to this side and not fast. I, uh -huh. I believe that those two things go together. If you're praying to God and you don't seem to be getting your breakthrough, uh, maybe you should try a little bit of fasting on the other side of that prayer and you'll see how God is going to work with you. Amen. But this morning, this morning, this morning, I want to talk to you about prayer that pleases God. There are prayers that, that, that please God, there, there are prayers that move God, and there are prayers that God just don't hear. And folks don't understand it, don't hear that, but yeah, there are some prayers that God is just not going to pay any attention to. We are capable of praying some inappropriate prayers. Even the disciples did that. Even the disciples, well, Jesus, when we, when we get to heaven, who's going to sit on your left and who's going to sit on your right? That, 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 going to Jesus like that is a prayer. On the, on the, on the uh, Mount of Transfiguration, they said, oh, Jesus, why do we have to go back down to the people? Why can't we just stay here and bask in all your glory? And that, that in itself was an inappropriate prayer. So we are capable of going to God with inappropriate prayers. But this morning I want to concentrate and focus on the prayers that pleases God. The wonder and privilege enjoyed by the children of God is prayer. Prayer is a gift from God. Prayer is something that God gave us to have an instant communication with Him. Reminds me of the story about the Navy guy and the Army guy, and 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 the, the Navy guy had went all over all over the world, and every time he went to a a, a, a Navy ship, there was always a gold throne in the chief's mess. And his Army sergeant said, every time I travel all over the world and I and I went all the Navy ships, there's always a gold phone in the chief's mess. And the chief said, yeah, it's no problem with that. He said, yeah, but, but when I was on the Air Force Base and I, and I went into the, into the sergeant's office and they had a gold phone in there, it cost $100 a minute. <laughs> and when I went over to the Marine Corps Base and, and I went in to use their, their gold phone over there in their mess, and it was $1,000 a minute. Why? When I come to a Navy ship and I go to use the gold phone, it's free. And he said, because we, in the chief's mess, we pray here. So our phone line is a direct line to God and you can use it for free. 
-hmm. And it's the same way in our lives. We have a golden phone that right now that whenever we need God, we can pick that phone up and call on God. And guess what? There's always someone on the other side willing to pick up the phone and take your call. Whenever you call on God, you will never get an answer on a machine and say, call me back later. I can't take your call. Mm -hmm. If you don't get an answer from God, if you don't get an answer for God, maybe it's an inappropriate prayer. Through prayer, we can find the peace that guards our hearts. You know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Even in our seven first words of Jesus last week, he said, go and peace be with you. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You cannot have peace in your life unless Jesus is a part of it. All right. Nothing in your life will ever work out unless Jesus is the center of it. Folks want to understand why their marriage is not working? There's no Jesus in it. Folks don't understand why their children are running around acting a fool. There's no Jesus in there. Amen. They're taking Jesus out of the school and put everything else in but Jesus. Amen. Check it out. The first step that they moved to take Jesus out of school was to remove prayer. And you can go back to the old days and talk to all of the old teachers. I know this was prevalent for my teachers. That Mike was always exciting and running around and acting a little crazy until the teacher said, it's time for prayer. There was something about the teacher standing in front of the class and saying that we must stop everything that we're doing so that we can have a moment of prayer. Doesn't matter who you're praying to, doesn't matter what you're asking God for, but it was something that just calmed you down, made it a little bit more sensible so that you knew that the teacher and God was in control. Mm -hmm. Amen. But in today's society, everything else is in control. They tell the little children to be like Nike and just go do it. <laughs> That's right. Amen. You don't have to tell your parents about what you're doing and when you're doing it. What do you mean you don't have to tell me? I'm paying for everything. In fact, I'm paying for your salary to be in there telling my children all of this crazy mess. But the problem with that is, is that we as Christian folk inside the church, we come here on Sunday morning and we complain and we do nothing about it. But I'm here to tell you this morning that we need to pray. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Man. The privilege of prayer assumes that God will help us and heed our prayers. When God doesn't hear from you in a while, he, I don't understand how people in the Christian church today can say how much they love God and how much God is a part of their life, but we never pray to God. It's, it's, like, that, it's, like, it's like we're dating God and, and we come in and we date Him on Sunday, but on Monday morning we just leave Him alone. God wants to hear from us all the time, not just on Sunday, not just at altar call, not just at prayer board call, but God wants to have a continual relationship with us. Elder Stewart says it all the time, if you love God, you want to be around God, you want to talk with God, you want to walk with God, you want to have a relationship with God, and the relationship that God gave to us to have with Him is prayer. Amen, man, amen. If the church was just only pray, all the things and all the problems that we're having in society today would just simply happen to go away. When things start not going right in my life, when things get me down and I get out and I don't understand it, i got to get back to that place where I can just get with God in prayer and He can reveal to me some things I didn't see in the natural. In the natural, you'll get upset. In the natural, you get mad. In the natural, you react to something. But when you get with God in prayer, He breaks it down to you so that you can understand what's going on. Because when you're wrestling against these things in the natural world, it's not against flesh and blood. It's against something else. Though. Those evildoers, those principalities, those people in high evil places. you got to get down in prayer so you can get back and do battle with them. And the only thing that we can go into battle with and have God on our side is prayer. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this morning I want to talk about this prayer that pleases God. So what do we know as a prayer that pleases God? We go back to Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 through 15. We see in these scriptures, we see in these things how Jesus starts to describe prayer that God hears. What not to do in regards to prayer. You don't want to be like the hypocrites who pray standing in the churches. And the scripture actually says standing in the synagogues. You hear them? Folk get up there and they start to praying and, and you know what's going to be along with them. You go to some church they want to be seen church. by men. They want to get out there and just and make a spectacle out of all the things. I love what my daughter Peyton says. It don't take God that long when you pray. 
Amen, amen. Don't take God that long. Why? Because even when you're going into that room, when you're going into that supplication, God already knows what's on your heart. Even before you go there, God knows what you need is. That's the wonderful thing about a great and mighty God. And look how bad Jesus was. He didn't waste a whole lot of time with praying and, and always acting a fool. I, I like what Pastor Bolton says sometimes. Don't pray, just obey. There's some things that you know God has set for you, and you go, I gotta go pray on it. No, you ain't. Just do what God called you to do, and you'll be all right. Yes. Amen. But there's some of us that want to go around and be just like the hypocrites. They say one thing and they go do another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember I saw a preacher one time trying to preach and he started praying over this girl and he walked up to her and grabbed her and said, by the name of Jesus, I cast this demon out of you. And she looked at him and said, that's not what you said last night. <laughs> 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 I ain't talking from experience either. I was a witness to it. But, but, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that you don't want to be a hypocrite. You don't want to render your prayers useless. There's some prayers that are useful and useless. And you got to be able to get out there and not be like a hypocrite. We want our prayers to be useful. We don't want to walk around here with our little cards and say, well, loving arms outreach ministries. We pray six times a day. And it's like we're bragging. But if we don't come together as a real church, as a real congregation, and really get down to that prayer, I'm talking about that prayer that moves things. Man, That's where the power man. is. The brother last night was preaching about power in the church. There's no power because there's no prayer. We're so interested in programming and, and the lights and the glitter and the praise dancers and the choirs and the, and the key and all the other stuff that goes along with that. We just can't get right back down to just prayer. Prayer changes things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man. I've seen people walk into church one way and leave a whole completely different person. Yes. yes. You want the brothers to pull up their pants? Pray! We want the sisters to, to, to wear the appropriate clothes to church? Pray! We want choir? Pray! You want a keyboardist and a drummer? Pray! I'm here this morning to tell you about the prayer that God hears. Yes, yes, yes. Then Jesus talked about the hypocrites having their just reward. We must understand that as Christians, our rewards await us in heaven. And with all the prayer and all the reverence and all the things that we have, our rewards await us in heaven. I know folk that pray for things that you know God, it just ain't going to give them. Oh God, I pray right now for a brand new Lincoln Continental. Oh God, I pray right now for the biggest house that the man can have in the block. Oh Lord, give my wife a mink coat. Ain't praying about nothing about the kingdom. It's always about material things. Have you noticed that? Even sometimes when most folk, it, it, it just, it's just, what are we praying for? Oh God, I want to just get down and get to the point where I can just pray to God and say, God, I want my seed to be saved. That's the prayer that I want God to hear from me. God, have a hedge of protection over my son because you know he's my heart. And because he's my heart, I know that the enemy is going to attack him from every end. You guys ever notice that? When I'm really to get ready to get down into a deep subject, when I'm really ready to get down, Mikey gets sick, that's an attack on him on the physical. That's the enemy coming out of him and saying, I can't get to you because God hasn't removed that head of protection around you, so I'll distract you by getting to your son. I'll distract you by getting to your daughter. I'll distract you by getting to your wife. But the only thing that I got to block that, the only thing that I got to cut that off is my prayer. Yeah. Man. You mothers Man. know what it's like. You mothers know what it's like. You know mothers know what it's like. Every time your child walk out the door, a mother saying a prayer. Every time a child, oh God, protect my baby. A daddy, sometimes we get so excited about it, we don't care. We are happy the kids getting out of the house so we can have a little bit of time with mama alone. Amen. <laughs> That's what I was thinking last night. No, <laughs> uh -huh. But Jesus is not condemning all public prayer. I'm not saying not to get out and pray in public. Jesus prayed in public. Jesus was praying all the time. There's not a time in the Bible when Jesus wasn't praying. I believe Jesus prayed every time he took a bite of food out of his mouth. Picked up a thing. <laughs> the name of Jesus. Well, he didn't say the name of Jesus. Hey, Father, the name of the Father. I love this apple. He was, have you ever seen folk like that? I don't see it today. But growing up, we had this mother in the church. Everything this woman did, she prayed. And I'm not talking about in a public outward way. 
but you just knew she was praying for you by, by just a little, just, just I, I could just see it now coming up with a fold to pay the pastor's cloth. And, 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 and you know that in that folding of the cloth, there's a prayer in there. And it's the same thing with mothers today sending our children out. Amen, amen. There's a prayer in that when you're buttoning up their coat or you're putting on their hat or you're doing this or you're doing that. There's a prayer in that. Amen. There's a prayer in that. Prayer that God hears. Then we also have something that I call prayer that God hears. Prayer that God hears is a prayer that is often done in private. Amen, amen. It's a prayer often done in private. I see all the guys come out all the time, all the preachers come out. And before they come into the, they come into the pulpit and before they pray, they go over to the chair and they sit down on their knees and they get down there and pray. I look for that in the Bible. There is nothing, nothing in the Bible that says that's a requirement. Matter of fact, if we're constantly always in prayer, when I walk in the pulpit, I should be praying anyway. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Should be praying anyway. So that's just to be out in public, so a, a spectacle, a show. That's why I couldn't answer you the last time when you were asking me this morning, Bishop, you hear me? You listening to me? I couldn't answer. I was in prayer. And about the third time he asked me, I think he figured it out. He must be in prayer over there. <laughs> mm. Pastor Bowman may not be the brightest bulb in the box, but he lights up. <laughs> oh, I got a clock by the hell on that one. <laughs> we love them, we love them, we love them. We love them. And we appreciate you. The church looks good, don't it? Pastor yeah. Bolton came in here on Wednesday at his prayer time. And after he prayed, he cleaned. Come on, somebody, let's give Amen. God some praise. Amen. Amen. So when we go in prayer in private, we get back to one of our life shapes. Because when you're in private, in prayer with God, you are asking, actually in resting with God. And when you rest with God, you have that opportunity to hear from God. Prayer is not a one-way street. It is a reciprocal process. When you pray to God, you should have that time out so that you can hear from God. We used to do that back in the holiness churches. We would pray, and then the band would stop playing, the choir would stop singing, the preacher wouldn't preach, and the whole place just got quiet. So we could hear from God. The pastor no one's on the conference line, so we're not going to run down your back for you. Thank you, sir. So we can hear from God. Mm -hmm. How often do we do that? How often do we make that a part of our prayer life? Folk think that when you come in and praise God or pray with God that you got to be hooping and hollering. Why can't we just come in and be quiet? Folks always want to talk about the Catholic folks and the Jehovah Witnesses and the Methodists and all the other folks. But I think sometimes they get it right. Because they take that quiet moment time to hear from God. Then... A prayer that God doesn't like is a prayer that you offer it up to men and not to God. You offer it up to men and not to God. Folk want to just throw any stuff out there to you whatsoever. We got folk just teaching anything now. Anything and everything. You go to folks now, you ask them stuff, you go, well, you know, should children, before they get married, shack up? Well, you know, I, I can't really harm anything. They get all intellectual on No! Fornication! The word of God doesn't change. Oh, oh but, 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 but I, I can't give you that complete answer, but, 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 but let me go pray on it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll pray with you on that right now, and, and we'll, 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 we'll cast that out right now, and, and, and God will forgive you for that, and, and, and all this other stuff. They're offering this up all up the man. Go to God, and God will reveal the answer to you. And sometimes in that prayer with God, when he gives you the answer, it's not the thing that you're looking for. Sometimes I go to God and say, God, you know, tell me how good I am. God, promote me right now. Have me do this. Have me do that. Me, 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 me. And God will say, no, no, no. It's not about you. It's all about me. In your prayer, in your worship, say something about me. Because if you want to pray to man, I'll send you a man you can pray to. Uh -huh. Amen, amen. That's the type of thing I'm talking about. We have to be praying folk. 
Not just a regiment, not just getting there repeating stuff over and over and over and over and over and over again. I hear folk get up there and preaching, you, you don't even understand what they're saying because everything is, oh, father, 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 when I pray with God, I like to have a relationship with Him. I like to talk to Him and be like, Hey, God, you know, I really don't understand this stuff right here. I'm banging my head up against the wall. I was telling the pastor, Stuart, that last night. I'm like, Elder Lucy, I don't understand! <laughs> but when I got home and I got into prayer last night, God just began to reveal things to me. Some things I can fix and some things that's just out of my control. Some things that I need to lay before the altar and just leave it alone. Some of us bring stuff to God in prayer and then we take it back. Here, God, I give this to you. I have no idea how I'm going to pay these bills, God. I'll give it to you. Within 15 minutes, we're like, oh, man, how am I going to pay those bills? <laughs> what in the world am I going to do? You just gave it to God. Amen, amen. Shh. Get into that quiet place and hear from God. And God will reveal to you exactly what to do. Sometimes we ain't really got to do much. When you go to God in prayer, you also want to go to God with a repentant spirit. Sometimes we go to God in sin and think that we're right. Oh God. I'm going to come to you and know that I'm not living right. And I know that I'm not living right, God, but I want you to make it right. God is looking back on my. You, you have my word. I, I, I've given you the instruction on what to do to fix that and why. You want me to fix what? Live right. Get right. Folk don't want to preach the truth anymore. Folk don't want to tell people that if you're not living right, you're going to hell. Because they want to fill up the pews. Mm. They want to fill up the pews and they want to fill up their pockets. They'll say anything to do anything just to do it. I love the illustration the pastor gave last night at the, at the service we were at. He said, if you had a church full of 2,000 folk and 1,999 of them were gay, you need to get out there and tell them the truth. <laughs> And I'm one of the few pastors that folk freak out about. Because I tell them in a minute, it's okay to be gay. Y'all remember that I preached that? It's okay to be gay. You just can't live that way. You can be deeply in love with another man or another woman, and you are the same sex, and that's your desire, and that's what you want to do, and that's in your heart. Go to God in prayer. Ask God to strengthen you to live the way he designed you to live. Watch what happens. Amen. Watch Amen. what happens. Watch what happens. So folks say, oh, well, Pastor, you think gay people in heaven? We're not going to be in this physical body. The sexual desire in us as we know it won't exist. Because when we get in heaven, our Amen. desire and our only purpose in heaven is to praise and worship Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. In fact, we were created for to be worshipers to God. Uh -huh. Amen. Worshipers to God in our praise. Worship to God in our worship. Worship. Worship means working. Hence the word work. W-O-R-K, W-O-R-P. Worship, work. It's all a part. It's in our DNA. I'm reading that book. It's in our DNA. So all this other stuff that what we think, oh my God, I'm going to go to heaven and have a thousand virgins. No, you're not. <laughs> you won't even be in this, in this body. Amen. But if you are, I want some too. <laughs> Jesus will set these things in order when he comes. But we're talking about prayer that pleases God. Prayer that God hears. God hears it. He understands it. He understands the struggle that we go through. You can't tell me that a homosexual man or woman that goes into prayer with God and says, God, I want to live for you, not this fleshly, earthly desire. God, I really don't want you to take it from me, but just strengthen me to abstain from it. It's the same thing as a heterosexual man who is married, attracted to another woman, who goes to God in prayer and says, God, I want that woman. I want to be with that woman. I like that woman, but strengthen me not to desire desert my wife and break my commitment and my vows that I made to her to you. It's the same thing, but we act like we can't preach it anymore because we're going to chase some folks away. But I'm here to tell you that 
today. I'm going to stand on the word of God. And I'm going to stand on my prayer that God sends me folk that I understand the difference between the two. <coughs> so we want to go to God and offer him our prayer with a murder of that natural stuff. And just put me in the spirit. It's prayer. Amen, amen. You've gone through something in your life. You don't understand why all these folks that don't go to church and don't have nothing, no education, no nothing, no this, no that, no other, pray. Change your motives and start to pray and watch how your life changes. Get some prayer partners with you. If that ain't strong enough, call us up on the prayer line. Pray. Amen, amen. We walk around here and think we bad. Well, you know, we have prayer at our church every Wednesday at noon. That ain't good enough. God wants more. Amen. God wants more. We should have the church open every opportunity we have to have prayer. We should just drive by here sometime and just because we're in the building, down there having dinner, hanging out with our friends, we know there's still a prayer board in here. We know there's still a prayer box in here. How many of us really take the time out to open up the door? Not you, Elder Lucy. Open up the door to come in here and just pray just because we're in the building. Not you, Pastor. Amen. Pray. Pray. What would happen if all the churches in America banded together and began to pray? Mm. Mm. <laughs> everybody, everybody hear about that day they call it the, the National Prayer Breakfast Day and they, and they all get upset because the president didn't go to one of these things? That's just what the enemy loves to do. Get us completely distracted from what God called us to be and God called us to do. And now we're all going to focus on whether Obama went to have a prayer breakfast somewhere. That clown. I'm going to pray anyway. I'm not going to wait for National Prayer Breakfast Day to do it. I'm going to pray at breakfast every day. Because God hears me. See, remember back in the day when religion was early in the first century? They were telling folks that you couldn't pray. That you had to go to the rabbi for the rabbi to pray for you. Jesus comes along and says, no, I'm removing that, and I'm telling you, you can do it. Mm. I'm here for you. I'm not here to abolish the law, but I'm here to fulfill the law. So when Jesus died on the cross, he took away that middleman and gave us a direct line to God, and we ain't using it. All these churches across America, all the churches that we have on every corner and everything that we're doing, they're ineffective, they are mute, they are dead, nothing happening, they have no power because they have no prayer. Yes. Man. They got the big choir, the big, the big band. They got all that stuff, but they have no prayer. Yes. Pastor don't pray. The deacons ain't praying. The mothers ain't praying. Ain't nobody praying. Everybody's talking about me, my mess, and forget about the rest. Everyone's talking about the next pastor's anniversary, or the next big thing, or the next convocation, or or the next thing. Ain't nobody talking about. Let's just get together and pray. Yes. 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 Man. So when are you going to get together with all the churches, Bishop, and, 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 and start planning this thing for the apostle? I'm thinking, what? Why don't I just get together with all the churches and we just pray? Amen. For the apostle. Amen. Amen. You're too radical for that. Amen. We got to get together and start praying. Because then we began to pray, and we pray the prayer that pleases God, the prayer that God hears. The liars in the church, they'll stop lying. The backbiters in the church, they'll stop backbiting. Mm -hmm. The drug addicts in the church won't need drugs. The drinkers in the church will stop drinking. The cheating men and women will stop cheating. All these things that affect the church, the walls in the church, they'll start coming down. Then we talk about we're going to have a, a pancake prayer breakfast. Don't take the pancakes out. Let's just have a prayer. <laughs> the fundraiser. We want to connect prayer with money. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. They're on the internet. Mm. Send me $5 and I'll pray for you. What? <laughs> 
You see the TV evangelists all the time. I got this prayer napkin here, this prayer handkerchief here, and if you send me five dollars, God will bless you. I'll send you one right now if, if you send me in five dollars, and, and you'll get all your blessings uh, with this prayer cloth. And I'm thinking here, maybe y'all need to keep some of those prayer cloths with you. Maybe you need it. <laughs> Because if I got to send you five dollars to keep you on the air, that prayer cloth ain't doing you no good. Amen. 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 Folk who walk about all the time have no power in their prayer. None whatsoever. We're going to pray for our finances. And they start praying, oh, Lord, send us some good tithers. What? I do, Lord, send me some folk that's not saved. Send me some folk that I can teach them your word. Send me some folk, Father, that are broke down at their bottom, at their wits, and they don't know where else to go. Send me somebody, God, that nobody else wants to talk to. Send me somebody, God, that I can pray for. Send me somebody, God, that got a 